All right, welcome to the Robert Show. It's uh, day one at Snowflake Summit. Super excited to chat with John from Acryl Data. John, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm kind of excited to learn more about Acryl Data, what you do at Acryl Data. Can you tell us more about it? Absolutely. Hey, thanks. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm John, I'm a co-founder at Acryl, and at Acryl, we're trying to build a central control plane for your data. Right. We like to say that Snowflake's really good at storing data and querying and processing data. We're good at the human component on top of the data, the who, what, when, where, and why of the data. Yes, exactly. So thanks for sharing that. Also kind of quickly wanting to learn a little about uh, why is data quality so important in today's organization. We've been obviously seeing all the Gen AI hype, but who's going to talk about data quality? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the reason is that data is becoming a product. And what you just mentioned is just one of the types of data products, which is an AI model. Right. But of course, there's internal reporting dashboards, there's recommendation features that feed back into the platform that are statistics-based. So I think because data is becoming a product, it's more important than ever that the quality of those products is maintained over time. Um, so yeah, that's. I think we're going to continue to see that as a trend over the next 10 to 20 years, and it's going to just explode. Yeah, I can't wait to obviously uh, see all the solutions that you all are bringing to the table. But at the same time, I'm also kind of curious to know a little about the problems that you foresee in the future. Yeah, I think the big one we're seeing, especially around data quality right now, is just accessibility and visibility of quality context. Um, you know, a lot of folks are quickly adopting tools for data engineers to you know, monitor the health of their data assets. But the right, problem is right. that a lot of the times the data quality rules are buried inside of Git repos or YAML files and not accessible to the folks 100%. who understand the data, which is the people using it on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I totally hear you. In terms of uh, also talking about the problems, how is Acryl Data solving today's problem and the future? How are you guys looking at it? Yeah, well, you may have seen this coming, but we're trying to uh, make it more accessible. So what we're trying to do is build one platform that unifies data discovery. So finding the data, where is it, who is it, uh, why does it exist, data quality, so the health of every data asset, and then data governance, so the compliance aspect of every data asset under one roof. Because ultimately, we believe that these signals reinforce each other. So if you understand who the owner of a table is, you're going to have a better data quality practice. You're going to have a better data governance practice. And of course, it's going to be easier to find data. 100%. I think that's one of the biggest problems for a lot of enterprises out there as well. And uh, you're looking at it very sharply, so which is uh, good news for a lot of enterprises <laughs> Thank out you. there. Also quickly wanting to learn about why Acryl Observe uh, and not another observability tool and uh, what's the benefit, benefit of having it uh, you know, all in one? Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to go back to this idea of accessibility. We believe that you cannot build a sustainable data quality practice unless you bring all the personas who are involved in producing and consuming data into the data quality picture. Um, there's many vendors that are going after data observability and building for data platform engineers specifically. Right. And let me tell you, those guys do their work very well. They're, they're great tools. But I, we think what they do not do well is bring everyone into the story around data quality. So we're trying to unify that picture, bring one tool where you can bring everyone inside of your organization, whether it's a marketing associate, a BI intelligence engineer, or an upstream application engineer, very and bring important. them into that. Yeah. Yep. No, I think that's very important. Uh, any use case that you have on top of your mind that you would like to share with our audience? Oh yeah, one use case is kind of cool, which we have one of our customers trying this out right now, is because the downstream business analysts um, are, are the kind of the domain experts of some of their key tables, they're having those folks come into Data Hub and in three clicks or less to find data quality monitoring checks. And then they're actually running those checks inside of their CI CD uh, pipeline for data. So right. you can actually define them through a user, a uh, really accessible user interface, and then run them where you want to. So their engineers can still run them as part of their airflow jobs or as part of their CI CD, which is kind of a cool balance. Love it. Uh, if folks want to learn more about Acryl, where can they do that? I know you all have a lot of resources too. And if they want to reach out to you, what's the best place? Yeah, absolutely. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'm John Joyce. And in terms of learning more about Acryl, you can go to acryl.io or acryl.io slash observe if you're specifically interested in data quality and observability. Thank you very much, John. It was such a pleasure hosting you on The Rabbit Show. And Absolutely. Thank you, Rabbit. All right.